I would like to show you a recent clip of Noam Chomsky's remarks in regards to the situation in Ukraine and then briefly discuss them. What is our goal? Do we want to escalate the war? More Ukrainians die? More destruction? Or do we want to move towards a peaceful negotiated settlement? One of the most respected individuals in the U.S. diplomatic corps, Ambassador Chaz Freeman, highly respected, properly individual with a wonderful record. A couple days ago, he came out in an interview and said, U.S. policy seems to be to fight the Russians to the last Ukrainian. That's the policy. We'll keep, if we've formulated no feasible goals that can lead to an exit from this tragedy. So we can keep pouring in arms. We're good at that to escalate the fighting. More Ukrainians will die, more Russians will die. Goes nowhere, just towards further escalation. Well, is there a possible diplomatic settlement? Yes, there is. Jess Freeman outlined it once again. Everyone knows what it is. The settlement, this has been going on for 30 years, I should say, not just started today. The settlement is, in rough outline, a neutralized Ukraine, not part of a military bloc, uh, and an internal settlement that will guarantee the rights of the Russian-speaking minority, provide a probably some form of federal solution like Switzerland, Belgium, others, uh, in which uh, minority groups have a degree of autonomy in their own regions. It's actually formulated in an agreement called Minsk II. Some version of that has to be the possible outcome. And as Freeman against stressed, if we don't want to just fight to the last Ukrainian, we have to offer uh, Vladimir Putin, an escape hatch. He has to have some way to escape from this without what amounts to suicide. If we tell him, or if we send our current message, you're going to face war crimes trials. Uh, nothing you can do about it. The sanctions will continue no matter what happens. We're telling him, fight on to the last Ukrainian. It might sound bold and, uh, uh, you know, Winston Churchill impersonation. Sounds very heroic. Uh, but for the Ukrainians, it's a death warrant. Okay, so first and foremost, I believe it's noteworthy to state, I believe that clip is sped up. Um, I don't know that for certain, but I would say that it's extremely safe to say that it is because the Noam Chomsky of 2022 does not speak that quickly. Um, with that being said, that was him um, talking to uh, the New Statesman in a recent interview. In the interview that he referenced in regards to Mr. Chaz Freeman, the uh, former or uh, U.S. diplomat, was uh, an interview that he did with Mr. Aaron Mate on The Gray Zone. I highly recommend that you check that out. It's, uh, it's about almost an hour long, but it's incredibly enlightened and hopefully and almost surely you can grab something from it as did I after I watched it. Now, in regards to what Noam Chomsky had to say, I'll just start from the beginning. Um, he asked the question, what is our goal? Uh, you know, What is the goal of the U.S. Um, in regards to the Russia situation with the people in Ukraine. Well, it seems quite obvious at this point, doesn't it? Especially with the quote unquote uh, Freudian slip, if um, it's ap applicable to call it that, that Mr. Biden made relatively recently. And it was the regime change remark that the White House uh, uh, afterwards came out, tried to debunk and, you know, say that, oh, that's not what he meant, uh, among other things. Well, it seems that it that's quite what he meant, especially if you look at U.S. actions in regards to the war in Ukraine. Now, um, Noam Chomsky quoted Mr. Chas Freeman, as he did say in his interview with Aaron Maté that I watched. And the quote was, it seems like U.S. policy is to fight right down to the last Ukrainian. And that is exactly what U.S. policy has been and up until now continues to be. They have... Uh, neglected peace talks and negotiations. Need I remind you that the very legitimate uh, and, and, and accurate grievances of Vladimir Putin leading up uh, to the invasion um, in, in terms of diplomatic talks were considered non-starters by the U.S. And, and NATO as a result. And that's something that's largely left out of conversation, especially in Western media, but it's always credible to bring that up. His asks, his grievances were considered non-starters. And so ever since then, the invasion began and the U.S. and their allies have done nothing more uh, but ship in billions of dollars in weapons to Ukraine 
furthering the bloodshed while also enriching the military uh, contractors and those like Raytheon and Boeing and uh, other uh, military industrialized corporations that benefit from the prospect of war as they're currently doing. And I mean, now things are coming to a head, but this type of uh, commentary you aren't seeing um, in Western media. And it's sad. And that's why I want to show it to you, because I do feel like you should receive both sides of the story. Um, whichever side you choose to believe is up to you. But um, there is truth to the matter, um, however hazy it may seem at the moment. And I'll revisit this quote that many people have been bringing up that was uh, said uh, quite some time ago. Um, by a pretty astute gentleman, and the quote goes as follows. The first casualty of war is the truth. And of course, on both sides, you have exaggerations, you have lies coming from uh, the Russian regime, as well as the U.S. and their allies, including Ukraine. And I mean, it's an ever so developing situation, and you find yourself not really knowing what's going on. We definitely don't know the truth of the matter as to what's going on or what's accurate as regards to the information that we're getting from these current ongoing peace negotiations. But let's pivot to these peace negotiations very briefly. So there are peace talks um, going on, and it's quite interesting. So when you look back to um, what Putin was trying to do previously before the, engage, before the invasion, which is engage in uh, diplomatic uh, conversations, and, you know, it, it um, basically were his core asks, such as the demilitarization of Ukraine, not having them join a hostile military alliance. And the U.S.'s response to this was, um, we'll just uh, relocate different weapons. You know, we won't point missiles at you. And they didn't even begin to address his core and immediate uh, concerns. But if you go back in history, it didn't even start then. A lot of people um, believe that this started. And I'm no expert on this. I'm getting the information just like many of you are. Um, but they believe that it's, it started back in February or the 24th and 25th, whenever the initial invasion kicked off. But this this uh, really boiled up into this point, And there were events that led up to this that aren't getting their um, exact exposure that they deserve, such as the coup that was backed by the U.S. in 2014, initial uh, expansion of the hostile military alliance after the Soviet Union fell in the 1990s. And, um, you know, it, it pushed the Russian regime to do things like what they did with Crimea, which if you look into that situation, um, uh, you know, whether they there was probable cause or not to do it, or whether or not they think or whether or not you think they had a probable cause to do what they did, there are reasons for the actions that that regime has been undertaking and to come out and pretend like this is some unforeseen attack on uh, sovereignty and democracy is, to be honest with you, quite unrealistic. Now, it's really sad what's happening to people in Ukraine and they're suffering quite greatly. I mean, this is chaos that they've been thrust into. But the fact of the matter is the U.S. and their allies are doing close to nothing to try to resolve this conflict through peaceful means. And in doing so, they are also trying to keep the sanctions on. And as Noam Chomsky alluded to in that video, they aren't giving Vladimir Putin, at least publicly, any kind of escape hatch. And that takes away, as Chomsky outlined, any kind of incentive for him to change behavior even a little bit. If he knows that after the war boils over and there a peace deal is then struck, that he's still going to suffer economically at the hands of the U.S. economic warfare that's being waged against Russia. He has no real reason whatsoever to relinquish any kind of control that he's already attained in Ukraine. Yeah, mind you, they pretty much accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. And therefore, um, a peace deal needs to occur. And if this does indeed occur, a peace deal and uh, the war is then brought to an end, what does that make the U.S. look like? You know, um, you've done nothing but add fuel to the fire. And uh, Russia's biggest ally, that being China, is actually a part of these peace deal negotiations. I'm not saying they're going to be the ones that are going to ultimately bring a stop to it, but they're at least a part of the conversation. And they've made very clear that they want this fighting to come to an end. But from U.S. leaders, Joe Biden in particular, of course, many others, 
you don't get that sentiment that they want the fighting to end, um, that they want um, innocent Ukrainians to uh, stop losing their lives. It, it seems like as Chomsky or Mr. Chaz Freeman alluded to, though quoted by Chomsky, they would like to fight down to the last Ukrainian. And look, at the end of the day, when all this boils over, the U.S. is going to look even worse than they have throughout this entire ordeal, which is um, ever so increasingly embarrassing. Um, their efforts to um, get some kind of regime change in Russia to push Putin out of power to somehow diminish um, the power of China, who they've been saber rattling at for some time. Their efforts are being thwarted and nothing is working. And it's this declining of an empire that refuses to come to terms with their decline. And it's sad to see, but um, this is a situation that history knows all too well and that we've seen on many occasions in the past. And just as a closing remark here, once again, zeroing in on that regime change comment that Biden uh, supposedly mistakenly threw out um, several days ago or whenever it happened, there will be regime change, but the regime change will not come in Russia.